Good evening, everyone. All right, so if we'll go ahead and get seated, we'll get started. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for all the groups being here, and thank you for everyone visiting and those from Fort Gibson Church here. So give a hoop, holler, a whatever, whenever I see who all's here. Uh, do we have Tahlequah? All right. Do we have Sand Springs? Anyone? Okay. 18th and Denison. Salisaw. Stillwell. Okay. Chandler Road. And Fort Gibson. All right. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Well, letting you guys know after the service, there's food in the back, lots of homemade soup and homemade cookies made by the members of Fort Gibson. So she'll stay for that. And let's start by standing up and we're going to sing a song. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people, shout to God. With the voice, wait a minute, shout to God with the voice of triumph, and I got a woo. All right, and we gotta do clap your hands, three claps. It, that's scriptural. That, da, da, da. Here we go. Clap your hands, all ye people, shout to God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people, sing for joy unto the Lord. Sing it, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Sing in hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Y'all have a seat. All right. Let's sing a little bit more. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free and I'm a child of God. Yes. 
Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Who the Son set free. Sing it out. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Mason Hopper is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Be about me. Dear God, thank you for letting us gather here for Christ's teens, and be with, please be with Thomas as he gives us our lesson, and please let us get, gain something from his lesson. And um, please be with us whenever we might think you aren't there, but you are. Just let us help, help us see you, that you are there. In your son's name I pray, amen. Who has ever sung King of Kings? A new song that was out this year. Um, so if you don't know it, it's a real easy song, very traditional uh, tune, so I'm sure you'll catch right on. It has a very good story to it. It basically tells the stories, uh, the story of the Gospels and also the Book of Acts, and it's just a really good good song about uh, how things started in the uh, New Testament times, uh, New Testament uh, Christianity, when, the, when, when uh, things first started and the church first began. So I think that you'll really like this song. Mm. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of hope shall not kneel, shall not fade. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one.
God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. Isn't that a beautiful song? I love that. Just, uh, you know, tying, you know, what we do as a New, Te uh, New Testament uh, church to what was going on 2,000 years ago. And we're doing the exact same thing as uh, Jesus taught them to do all those years ago. Okay, we have two more songs before uh, Thomas speaks to us tonight. We'll start off with uh, Someday. And this isn't the, the Someday, Someday. Well, that part of it is, but this first part is, uh, is another part. I hope you know it. Mm. Someday, someday I will be called up to meet him, got to be ready when he comes. Peace and joy and happiness no more, sorrow got to be ready when he comes. Okay, let's go back and do that first slide again and then go right on through. Mm, someday, someday I will be called up to meet him, got to be ready when he comes. Peace and joy and happiness no more sorrow got to be ready when he comes ladies someday 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 peace and joy and happiness no more sorrow someday tenor I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday I trumpets will sound and the dead shall rise when he comes again. Someday I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday. Bass drop out. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Son, tenor drop out. Peace and joy. Everyone. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday I gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday, someday, someday I will be called up. To meet him, got to be ready when he comes. Peace and joy and happiness no more. Sorrow got to be ready when he comes. Amen. Let's stand for this song, The Greatest Command. <laughs> mm. Okay, ladies. Mm. Love one another, for love is of God. He who loves is born of God and knows God. He not love does not know God, for God is love. God.
God is love. Base come in. Love is all. Say amen. 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 Be seated, please. Really quickly, we're going to pray before Thomas's lesson. I'm going to give a prayer for him. Will you bow with me? Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you for letting everyone get here safely. Thank you for bringing us all together, and thank you for all those with us right now. Help Thomas give this lesson, and let him pour out what he needs to tell us and let us understand and give, us all, give him all your strength and help him throughout this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Kelly. First off, I want to say, that singing, whew, chills. I love singing. So, <clears throat> Barry and I were talking a few weeks ago. Um, Barry kind of gave me the lesson, which was like, hey, do you want to talk to Teen Connections? And as you see, I said no. But Bear was kind of throwing a few ideas out there. He was like, oh, you could be talking about this. You could be talking about this, as Barrett does. He's trying to be helpful. And he was like, oh, you could talk about love. Valentine's Day is around the corner. It's actually this Friday. That's kind of weird to think about now that I think about it. And as soon as he started talking about that, I heard this little voice in my head. It's my dad's voice. And he says, I hate Valentine's Day. I don't like Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is my least favorite holiday. You see, my dad hated Valentine's Day because he loved my mom. He hated Valentine's Day because he did it pretty much every single day of the year. He would have little chocolates at my house to give to her with little notes saying, I love you, hope you had a good day. He would have little flowers here and there. He would just do something little for her, and she loved that. He hated Valentine's Day because it was expected of him. It was the fact of... Every guy is expected to get their significant other chocolates, roses, balloons, fireworks, you name it, probably they have it. And it became a competition. Now, trust me when I said my dad was nobody to pass up a competition and he was not to be outdone by certain things. But on Valentine's Day, he's not going to get my mom something that she doesn't like. She likes flowers. She loved flowers. 
She loved chocolate. She loved little handwritten notes. Didn't much care for balloons. She didn't care for all the sparkly stuff that was on there. She was fairly simple. So who's to say my dad getting this little thing from my mom that she loves is anything less than a guy going all out getting balloons and fireworks and blowing up the place because it was pretty. Well, the other thing is he, that he hated was everything's overpriced. Now, if you're me, you go the day after February 14th and get discounted chocolate. Let's be real. That's the only reason why I love Valentine's Day. But he hated that. He hated the fact that it's expected of him and they bump up the price because you had to get special chocolates or you had to get special flowers or you had to do it the special way. And he hated that. He hated everything that was to do about Valentine's Day. Now, I'm not saying that <coughs> Valentine's Day is a bad day at, by no means. Valentine's Day is a great thing. It gives us a reason to spoil our significant other. And that's one of the good things he liked about it. But he hated that people have put so much emphasis on one thing. And so my lesson today is actually about emphasis. So before I do anything else, I want to tell you guys a few words that I just kind of came up with and a little phrases that kind of that we kind of use every single day that basically mean emphasis. Things like love or like, like what do you love? What do you like to do? Or care, what do you care about? Things like that. Uh, time, what, where do you put your time? Effort, you gotta put a little bit more effort into it. <coughs> value, what do you value? Focus, in band, this was actually one of our main things. You gotta focus on this part. You gotta focus on this. Trumpets, focus on this part. Actually, Hayden said focus, I think, 30 times in his lesson today. Uh, impact. Who impacted you in your life? Or my favorite that a friend of mine gave me, devoted. We actually had a lesson not too long ago, a teen week actually, called devoted. <coughs> so remember those things and kind of listen throughout the lesson because I'll probably be saying a few of them. But three main things that I emphasize, and they're in reverse order of how I emphasize them. And this is how I'm going to talk about them. So first things first is goofiness. Next is family. And saving best for last is God. Now, as I said, first things goofiness. As you can see, I got my business suit on right here. And I wear this on special days. If you live in Muskogee, for Gifts and Tahlequah area, you'll probably see the rest of this suit. As you can tell, I like it. I look good. And if you're going to ask me if I just wore this for an hour to make a joke, yes. I did, because that thing is hot, holy cow. On another special day, you may see a buddy of mine named Fred. This is Fred. He waves. He's okay with coming into houses on a specific day as long as you guys already have a turkey, but not unless you have a turkey. He's scared of that. There's another holiday that's kind of coming up here in a few days. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump away that I may have a cotton tail and some bushy ears and a white suit, you know, has a bunny in it. Anyone know that holiday? Okay, cool. <laughs> or if I'm feeling professional, I might have a hat. Might pop my collar a little bit, you know, have to look good, right? Right? No? Okay, trust me, I don't wear hats very often. So basically, I love being goofy. I love talking to people. I love bringing people's spirits up. One of my favorite things to do is actually just make people laugh. I have many instances in my life where I've talked to people and they've just been down. They just have a bunch of negative thoughts. And when those negative thoughts come in, it just clouds their judgment, it clouds everything. So I come in, crack a joke, make them smile, brighten their day up. It's just what I do. If you see me at school, one of the things I possibly that I might have is I have a game bag. Now, this is no ordinary game bag. I went all out on game bag, spent 20 bucks on it. So it's about this tall, and it's one of those like hiking bags. The ones where you put a, like, a sleeping bag in it, put a tent in it, you put it on, it has like all three straps up in it. You go out hiking for a week, and you set everything up, and then you take it down and hike back another day or two, like in a very intense bag. And people see that at school all the time. They're like, why do you have that? And I say, the essentials for life, board games, card games, D&D, you know, I mean, life, things that I enjoy. And that's basically one of the things I love to do. 
one of the things that is actually really funny about that is I actually get my goofiness from my parents, which brings me to my second point, which is family. Now, I got to emphasize that when I say family and parents, they do mean the same thing, but my family doesn't just stop at my blood family. If it stopped at my blood family, I'd have about 10 people in my life, and that's not fun for me. And plus, I mean, Jesus' bride was the church, so who's to say we're not all family? We are brothers and sisters in Christ, so we're family. Hi. If you guys don't like that, I'm sorry. Take it up with the big guy. That's not my fault. But, <laughs> but family goes beyond that. It goes friends, it goes family, friends, church family, anybody. Now, back to the kind of goofiness with that, my mom always had themed jokes. If it was Halloween, she might say, what's the skeleton's favorite instrument? People might say trombone. They'd be wrong. He doesn't have lungs, he can't play a trombone. It's the bongos, the. Or another story about my dad that I absolutely love is I was sitting in the living room and he was sitting in his computer room and I'm just sitting there watching TV and I hear, Thomas, get your butt in here. And I'm sitting there going, oh no, what did I do? Typical kid thing. I'm sitting there going, okay, did I take out the trash? And I was like, took out the trash, okay. Did I get an F on assignment? I was like, no, I didn't. Okay, so what is he mad about? And I go in there and I'm kind of shaking a little bit and I'm like, hey dad, what's up? And he goes, you know, sometimes I like to sit up with my knees pressed against my chest. And I was like, why? He goes, because that's just the way I roll. <laughs> why? I don't know. My dad loved it. Granted, we also got food after that, so I was happy. But even though we had goofy moments in my family, <coughs> we also had very serious moments. And some of the serious moments I absolutely loved. Another day that we get to kind of spoil somebody is Mother's Day. One of my favorite times of Mother's Day, I don't know about other schools, but Fort Gibson sometimes has a little class or whatever, and I don't know how they manage to do this, but it's always one class that I've ever been in. And it's just like one class here, next year it's a different class, but it's only one class, I don't know why. But they specify that class for Mother's Day or Father's Day or whatever. And my freshman year, I was in art class, and she was like, we're gonna do something for Mother's Day. And I was like, sweet, I am a horrible artist. What am I gonna do? So I spent 30 minutes thinking and I found this little hand about this big. And I kind of held it up and I realized if you take out the spaces, you have just enough room for saying, I love you. I was like, okay, I can do that. So on one side, I chased this little hand and flipped it over and made another little hand. So they have two little hands and it says, I love you. On the other side, I kind of had to put my fans together like this, but it still said, I love you. And it said this, the side with the little hands. These hands have been with me my whole life, just like you. They've put you through a lot and have helped you a lot. They have some good memories and even scary ones. Yet you still take care of them every day. These hands have grown up some, but they still say the same thing. And you flip it over and it has big hands. It says, now my hands are this big. Even though they take care of themselves sometimes, they still need you. No matter what, these hands will always be like the ones on the other side to you. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Thomas. She loved it. She cried. Oh my gosh, that broke my heart because I thought I destroyed my mother. <laughs> but that was just something that she loved. She loved her family. Other holidays, like Thanksgiving, we had a tradition of waking up super early in the morning and my mom would beat us to the kitchen and me and my brother would go in there and help her. And by help, I mean I might eat some cookie dough here and there or taste test things. May have got kicked out a few times, but it's okay. But we always did that. We made, we made lunch, we made dinner, we set up a table that we didn't really eat at a whole lot and we sat there as a family. We were a family. We emphasized family. Another holiday that we did that with was Christmas. We absolutely loved Christmas. Now, we had a rule in my family where seven o'clock, they had to sleep until seven o'clock. The only time in my entire life to this day that I was happy about waking up before seven o'clock was Christmas day. My brother and I would wake up at six, 6.30 or so. We'd run into the, uh, to the room with the tree in it. We'd shake our little boxes and go, what's in here? Ooh, what's in here? Ooh, what's in here? What did mom get? What did dad get? Seven o'clock runs by, we run into the room like, hey, hey, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, we gotta go. 
They come out. They're all kind of groggy. They sit down in the chairs. We run into the living room, grab the stockings, come back in, give them everything, start throwing out presents and start opening. It was one of my favorite things. As I grew up, it became more fun for me to get them something and just sit there and wait for them to open it. Super creepy, I'm not going to lie. I just sat there and waited for all my presents. I was like, oh, one, just kind of, nope, not mine yet, okay. Oh, but that was a different story. <laughs> but that's just something we loved. After the, after the presents, we go back to the food thing again. My mom would cook food. I'd help her by eating it. And then my dad would do a bunch of other stuff, <clears throat> like set up the table. And we just talked. Sometimes my aunt and uncle would come, down from, uh, uh, come up from Texas. My great uncle would come down from Kansas. It was just a big family bonding moment. Now, my parents didn't completely talk to me about God a whole lot. And I think it's just kind of how they were raised. But one day of the year, my mom always told us about something about God. And that was Christmas. She'd set up the little nativity scene. She always loved the nativity scene. She had cows. She had goats. She had whatever you name it, she had it. But she always waited till Christmas Day to put baby Jesus in there. And every single year, she'd sit there and put baby Jesus in there and then tell us what that meant. About how Jesus came to this earth to die for us, to save us, and to free us to eventually take us back home. Which brings me to my third point, which is God. You see, the reason why I love God and why I put him at the most thing in my life is because without him, I would not be here to this day. He's put certain people in my life just here and there or whatever to kind of push me into this place right now. And without him, I don't know where I'd be. He's put certain people in my life like Barrett to push me to my limits, like, Ter uh, like Terrell. I don't know why I pointed over here, Terrell. I was looking right at you. Or Jerry or Robbie or people like that. Just push me to be further, to be better. <clears throat> See, another reason why I love God is his word, the Bible. It's not of a bunch of holy people who we sit there and look at them and go, holy cow, I can never reach that good. There's only one guy like that, and that's Jesus. The rest of them are human like us. The right hand of God, or guy who's the right hand of God, screwed up. People who were such great people, and they converted so many people, brought more people to Christ, made mistakes. His own apostles denied him, turned away from him, doubted him. They're normal people like us. It's not this great, beautiful human beings that we can never achieve. It's just normal people. Now, the other thing is too, time and time again, God shows us how much he cares for us, how much he loves for us. Do you guys remember the words I used earlier? First things first, care and impact. How does God show us that? What about feeding the 5,000? Jesus showed care. He cared about those people. I'm sorry, but if Jesus came back and fed 5,000 people with two fish and three loaves or other way around, I'm bad with numbers, I'm sorry. I'd still be impressed because I eat a lot. <clears throat> what about healing people? Constantly, Jesus is healing people throughout the entire Bible. And he gets criticized for it. People hate him for it. What are you doing? And he says, I'm healing him. What are you doing? What about compassion towards the adulterous woman or people of sinners the same type of sin? He goes up to him and says, I love you. Go and sin no more. Did that have an impact on them? What about time and effort and focus? <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing I saw whenever I saw this was prayer. So Matthew 21 verse 22 and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it, if you have faith. Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it. God has to be able to give you the time <clears throat> to give you that prayer. God has to be able to give you effort to make you receive that prayer, or give you that prayer, I should say. Another one, Romans 8, 26 through 28. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, 
For we do not know what to pray for as ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts know what is in mind of Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for, the who, <clears throat> for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. I can't tell you how many times in my life, <clears throat> I'm in my nightly prayers, my morning prayers or whatever, and I'm just driving to school or driving back, and I say, God, I don't know what to say. There's a lot going on in my life right now. Help. And I have comfort knowing that God has given me a gift, and he knows what I need. I have no clue what to pray for. I have no clue what to ask for. I have no clue I am human. I am Thomas. But I have comfort knowing that God cares God puts effort. God takes time out of his day to listen to me. The last one I'm going to talk about is love, value, and devoted. This is the easiest one for me to think about. And that is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For those who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Devotion. Love. Value. For God so loved the world. Think about that. For God so loved me. For God so loved Michael. For God so loved Terrell. For God so loved Lisa. For God so loved the world. Not just the people who believe in him, but the people who don't. The people who turn away from him, spit in his face and say, I don't want you. For God so loved the world. How devoted is that? How much value does he give on one single person. You see, the reason why I emphasize the two other things, being goofy and family, right below God, is because they help me push my life towards God. Being goofy has helped me in my entire life to talk to people, to get people to actually listen to me, which is surprising sometimes. My game group that I play with, some of them are atheists. Some of them are questioning their faith. They know I don't curse. They know I have faith. I wear shirts all the time that say, love God, or Jesus is the way, or this is the anchor, or something. And so sometimes they ask me about it. Why do you love God? I'm like, I've been waiting for that question. My family, as I said, my family just doesn't stop at those 10 people. It's all of you. Me going out to the world, being able to be comfortable, talk to people, Sometimes I don't have the answer to everything, and I will be the first one to tell you that because I doubt myself all the time. <laughs> but in that, in that time when I don't know the right answer, I say, I can get back to you. Please give me a little bit of time. If they're willing, I say, come back to the church with me. I have three great ministers who are more than willing to uh, talk to you and just make this a whole lot easier. And trust me, some of them do. It's amazing to see the church grow just because of me. So I want to challenge you guys with one thing, <clears throat> and this is my final thing. Go home and ask yourself, what do you want to emphasize? And now I don't mean just do it for one day. And I'm saying again, I'm not bashing on Christmas or Thanksgiving or anything. Those are great days to remember th certain things. But don't remember it and then sweep it under the rug. Emphasize it. Put it into your life. Talk about it. It's fun to be here and just to be able to spread the word. So if you have any questions, if you are not 100% sure what you want to emphasize or if you're just going through a hard time and you need to talk to somebody, please come up while we stand and while we sing. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Surround us, Lord. So Surround us, Lord. 
as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Surround us, Lord. Surround us, Lord. We need to be in your presence. Surround us, Lord. Surround us, Lord. Surround us, Lord. We need to be in your presence. Surround us, Lord. Surround us, Lord. Thank you, Kenley. Thank you, Thomas. That was awesome. Um, I tell you what, uh, having an intern like Thomas uh, makes things very interesting around here, if you can imagine. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that uh, awesome job. Yeah, I really like the, uh, the story about your dad sitting there with his knees on his chest. That's the way I roll. So that means uh, like he rolls, like he rolls. Okay, All right. Got it. Just making sure I got that. Okay, man, I am looking forward to what's going on back there right now. I see him putting the final touches on the soup and the cookies and everything. And so that's what we're going to go back. Uh, there should be plenty for everybody. And so everybody's invited to, uh, uh, to go on back there for that. Uh, make sure that our guests get through the line first. Um, we do have uh, one more song. And uh, then if you are unable to partake of the Lord's Supper, it is prepared and in the library. There'll be somebody there uh, to pray with you and let you partake of the Lord's uh, Supper. Are there any other announcements? The, um, uh, the Teen Connections next month will be in Henrietta on March 8th again. We are uh, so excited to have everybody uh, here tonight. Um, the weather was good enough. And so we sure appreciate uh, you taking the time uh, to come over here and, and worship in Fort Gibson and, and bless our church family, bless our town by this. We hope that uh, you were blessed as well. Will you stand please and we'll sing this uh, one more song. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. And then Noah Perry will have our closing prayer. Mm. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Lord, 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 let the King of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, Lord, you are good, good, Lord, you are good, good, Lord, you are good, good, Lord. Ladies, you're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, 
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. Face. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You are good, good Lord. You are good, good Lord. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Uh, again, we have uh, soup and cookies. Go ahead, come on up here. Noah's going to lead us in our closing prayer. You'll notice a little uh, arena area back there. That is for Jungle Pong. So if you don't know what that is, uh, just ask somebody and jump right on in there. It's kind of a very inclusive game. So uh, it goes by pretty fast. So if you don't know how to play that game, watch. You'll catch on pretty fast. All right. I know if you'll lead us in a closing prayer and bless that food. And then we'll be dismissed. Thank you all for being here. Will you bow with me? Dear God, thank you for today, and thank you for all the wonderful blessings you've done for us. Thank you for Thomas and his wonderful lesson, and that we can apply it to our lives and take one thing away from it. Bless this food we're about to eat, in Jesus' name, amen.